For me, I'm more of a homebody, so date night in. Date night out. I want to look cute. I want to go to a nice restaurant, have something good to eat, and I want to have great fellowship. <laughs> I like the fellowship. Fellowship. Part. Staycation for me, um, I don't know, I like my house. Yeah, vacation for me, because staycation, I still have to do all the work. <laughs> I still wow. have to cook all of the stuff that I do. Wow. Yeah, vacation I means I can kick my feet up. In the home. Nothing. Both. Yes. There are some times where I want my alone time. Just and uh, there are other times where, where, where we want friends, so balance. Yeah, I'm the same way. Both, a little bit of both. Sometimes I just like to speak to you. Other times I like to be with um, family and friends and hang out. Yeah. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> PDA all day. But okay? I do. PDA but I do, all minute, day. I do do the PDA because that's your way. But yes. PDA. We don't check each other's phone, but we have access to yes. each other's phone. So we yes. have passwords, and right. face recognition, yeah. whatever. Yeah, we have open everything. Yeah, open everything. We're all cool. Give it up for our pastors! Listen, I need you to do me a favor real quick. Can everybody get up on your feet? Tonight is about to be life-changing for all of us. That's why we're here. You registered, you came, because you knew that there was something in their belly, in their heart, that's going to come out of their mouth that's gonna literally change the trajectory of all of our relationships, our marriages. Uh, I'm just gonna do it the way I do it because that's how I do it. Uh, he's one of the greatest communicators of our time. He's absolutely incredibly amazing and his wife is the hardest working woman that I've ever probably met in my whole life. She's everything. Can you make some noise right now? And I want y'all to scream for our pastors, Pastor Darius and Shamika Daniel! Hey, can y'all give it up for our hosts, Isaac and Dee Karee? Yeah, you guys can be seated, man. Hey, welcome to everybody that's in the building. So glad to have you guys with us today. And let's make some major noise. I want to give a crazy shout out to Change Global, people that are joining us online. Clap your hands, ATL. Let's, let's welcome them. Uh, we see you guys in the chat, and we're, we're incredibly, excited to, to, incredibly excited to be here and uh, really looking forward, man, to our time together. Listen, um, really quick, we kind of want to, um, bef before I start, Ike had D do this. Yes. I know I've t some people have heard this story. They Others have. have not heard it, baby. They have. Let's tell the people how we met. All right. I'm going to get a short version. I saw him walk in the room. Well, he said that he had met me before, but I didn't remember that time. I saw you before. I hadn't met you, but I had. I had so seen. I saw him walk in the room. We were at an um, Alpha, a.k.a. party, and he walked in the room, and he had his hat on, and he had that jacket with the collar popped and I was like yes okay so I saw him and he went over and he was like sitting next to some of my line sisters on this bench and I'm like oh we're about to be in trouble because she's dating somebody and her boyfriend is mm -mm. so I decided to go sit between them because I didn't want to cause any problems for the night right so I wanted to make sure we had a great night so I said between them we laugh we talk and at the end of the night I wrote my name on a sheet of paper and my number and said if you're interested give me a call and I walked off <laughs> <laughs> and the rest is history <laughs> <laughs> yeah we it that that was that, yes <laughs> praise the Lord Praise the Lord. God made an interesting connection at an interesting place. Y'all thought we met at church. We was at a party. Uh, but, but we're, man, we're so grateful. And this is, I mean, I was probably 19, 20 years old. So it's like 23, 20, yeah. being together. Yeah, yeah. 23 years or so later. And uh, we still here, still kicking, y'all. Yeah. So thank y'all for being here tonight. Um, 
we, what we really want to do, I, when I told the team, we talked a little bit about the vision for this night, I say, hey, we want this to be fun. We want this to be creative. That's, that's what we're all about. We want it, we're about life, so we want this to be life-giving. Yet at the same time, we're about change. Right. And so I was like, what people experience here shouldn't be what they could experience at some, at any event, anywhere. Yes. There should be some value that is added to people here um, that they can really take and hopefully utilize and take their relationships to the next level. And so that's kind of what we want to talk about today. Um, we're looking forward to, to our time together, answering a few questions and uh, got a great night plan for you. And uh, one more time, if you're just glad to be here, let's make some noise. <laughs> So um, one of the things I think my wife and I both were privileged with is to see long-lasting and healthy marriages. Not that they, the marriages that we saw were perfect. Um, my parents' marriage wasn't perfect, and her parents' marriage wasn't perfect. Mm -hmm. But we did see some things in both of our parents' marriage that kind of gave us a picture of possibility. Uh, I saw it not just in my natural home with my parents. I think I saw it even more so. I was probably more inspired when she and I started dating and I went to her church in Jackson yes. one time and I saw uh, our pastor, the man who married us, mm -hmm. um, my pastor from college, he and his wife had been together at that point like 30 years. And I saw him like still lusting after her and they, they had a genuine, mm -hmm. it was a, like a real connection. It wasn't like the kind of the fake church front. Yeah. Um, it just felt genuine and real. And I, w I was in their home and I was able to see behind the scenes and I will see them in the airport and they, they hold in hands. And it's been like 30 years. And so uh, I just think we kind of decided that, hey, we're gonna be together mm -hmm. and we're not gonna settle for something less than what we saw. Right, absolutely. Um, I think when relationships get long-term, you can easily unintentionally start tolerating each other. Mm -hmm. uh, you can easily stop making the kind of investments that create the fire and the passion and the intimacy. Right. And we were just like, yo, if we're gonna be together, we're gonna be committed to and willing yeah. to take the steps that we need to take to actually have something that we genuinely like and we genuinely yeah. love. Absolutely. I know one of the things he told me early on, he was like, we will not have a business partnership. He was like, we won't just be married and just be at home doing a business together. Yeah. Like, you know, having almost like an arrangement. He was like, we're going to fight for this. And, you know, there were seasons where we didn't even know what to do. We were so young and we had that, you know, that two time, two session meet with the pastor and that was it. Yeah. We really didn't even understand what he was talking about. <laughs> I still don't remember what they said in our premarital counseling. <laughs> and so one of the things that he kind of inspired me to do is to study and make sure that he was like, how you go hard for everything else. I need you to go hard for this marriage. And I'm like, yeah, absolutely. And so we start to read and study and learn different material. And even to the point where I just really wanted to be able to learn for us, but then to help other people. And I said, hey, I want to do this more. So then I went back and got degrees and stuff about um, in marriage and family therapy because I really wanted to get this marriage thing right so that we could be leaders and so that we could be role models. But I really want to love him. Mm -hmm. And that's really what it was all about. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. So this is, this is kind of, we really want to add some kingdom value, man. And so one of the things that we're real clear on is we came up with these three words mm -hmm. that describe our marriage. Like we even got a mission statement for our marriage. Yes. And there are three words that we want to describe our marriage. We want it to be fruitful. Mm -hmm. That means we want something to be produced that wouldn't be produced if we hadn't got together. Right. What you sitting in right now takes both of us. There's so much that is produced mm -hmm. because we got together, fruitful. Yeah. So we want the world to be better because we got together. Yeah. Second thing is flourishing, mm -hmm. which for us is like emotional vitality. It's, I'm such a low drama guy. <laughs> and it's in part because I experienced so much of it growing up. Yeah. And so some of which I won't expose because I want to be judicious about those that it might impact. But I just saw a lot. Yeah. 
and I experienced a lot. And I know it does, it still probably impacts me to this day. One of the things my pastor says is emotional health doesn't mean nothing's wrong with you. It means you know what's wrong. Right. That's right. Yeah. And so because of that, I had an aversion to certain things. Um, now, you never did anything like this, but when we, start when, dating, when we first started dating, oh what did, my what, gosh. What did I, I tell you? I think we had literally just started dating, <laughs> and he was like, hey, just a disclaimer, you know, I see some of your friends, your line sisters, so I just want to do this whole disclaimer. He was like, I'm not going to yell at you, so you should never raise your voice at me. He was like, I'm not going to cut up your things, so don't come cutting up my <laughs> things. I was like, what? And I think the last one is, I'll never throw anything at you, so don't throw anything at me. I'm like, what is wrong with this guy? It was so random. I was like, who says that? But some of your friends yep. did cut up some they mattresses some and stuff, put sugar in like gas water tanks. Beds and, and all that stuff. Yes. <laughs> yes they did. It's a real thing. Yeah, cut up water beds. That's but we a real were in thing. college, y'all. We met in yes. college, so yeah, yeah we were young. Yeah. <laughs> So we say we want it fruitful. Yeah. Um, we want it flourishing. Flourishing. Mm -hmm. Like emotional. We just don't want it toxic. We have our challenges, but the world is toxic. Work yeah. and culture. Mm -hmm. We just we don't want that in our home. We don't want that in our relationship. Right. Mm -hmm. And then three, which is what we're going to talk about tonight, fulfillment. Yes. Meaning, and we're going to talk about this that there are certain needs that can only be met within the context of this relationship. Absolutely. And so if I can only shop at one store for certain things and that mm -hmm. store won't put on the shelf what I need. We got problems. <laughs> That's right. I'm not going to be fulfilled. Yeah. I'm going to be frustrated. Yeah. And it's hard to be in love with something that's constantly frustrating you. Nobody runs to what's frustrating them. Yeah. Is this too real? We're gonna be, we wanna add real value. Yeah, yeah so we, 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 um, <laughs> we, we were really, we were really, really um, serious about this. And so uh, meeting each other's relational needs brings fulfillment and not meeting those relational needs brings frustration. Right. She is not responsible for meeting all my needs. Mm -mm. Only God can do that, and I need to get some friends. Yeah, absolutely. But there are certain needs. That only <laughs> Shamika Daniels can meet. <laughs> Let's be clear. <laughs> so I'm going to make sure I meet those <laughs> so we don't have no problems. Yes. Right. <laughs> Whenever somebody does wrong, there is no excuse for wrong. No. No excuse for wrong. But if somebody does wrong, you want them, you want it to be because they were greedy. Right. Not needy. That's right. Yeah. That's good. Greedy, not needy. That's yeah. a good one. Greedy. Yeah. So, <laughs> so what we learned is, man, we really, we, we pursued this. We, man, we read and mm -hmm. counseling and um, coaching. Um, you name it. And we started out with like with the five love languages. We started out with the five love languages a long time ago. And Which I think was helpful. It was helpful, but it wasn't because it, it wasn't. didn't give us language. Like one of the things that we talked about, and I think I learned this before I was emotionally healthy. And as I worked through it, what I told him is I said, even when I became emotionally healthy, I still couldn't communicate what I needed. So if I went to the five love languages, I was like, I still don't understand it enough. I need more. And so as we began to talk and read and study, we were able to find terms that gave us language on how to meet each other's needs in another way. Yeah, yeah. and we, we came across something and we're actually gonna be leading a small group on, when our groups launch, and we're actually gonna be leading a small group on this for, um, and we like to do, we really like to pour into couples. We do. Whether they're married or dating, because I feel like uh, if there's some stuff we knew Yes. Before we actually got married, it, we would have had to do less repairing mm -hmm. from the damage we inflicted on each other. Right. So yeah. some of our lessons we had to learn in the context of marriage caused some pain to each other that we had to get over. 
And uh, as much as that is, as we could have avoided, I wish we, we could have. Right. Um, so anyway, man, we came across this guy named William Harley, and we just felt like, yo, he is speaking our language. Absolutely. He is giving us language um, for each other. Yeah. And, um, and so when we're talking about this idea of fulfillment, this is what we want you to know. Fulfillment has a formula. Mm -hmm. There's a formula for fulfillment. Yeah. I'm going to say it again. There's a formula for fulfillment. Right. Fulfillment has a formula, mm -hmm. and um, it is really something, and babe, I want you to unpack this for them, that Harley calls a love bank, and right. we're going to talk about these needs in a minute. This love bank changed the way I related right. to my wife. It changed the way my wife related to me, yeah. and it took the, the intimacy, emotionally, physically, you name it, to a completely different level. Yeah. So babe, talk about this idea of when we got this, we came across Harley's description of Love Bank, what that is, mm -hmm. and, um, and we'll talk, talk a little bit about some of the, the deposits couples need to continually make. Absolutely, so when you um, think about a love bank, you think about a natural bank account, all right? So everybody has a bank account, and in your relationship, you all have a love bank, each person. And so when you it's have good. positive interactions, pleasurable interactions, then deposits are being made into that bank. But then when you have interactions that aren't so positive, um, negative interactions, things that maybe cause pain and hurt, or even in knowing habits, a number of things, but it causes withdrawals. And so mm. with any bank account, if you have a natural bank account, if you make more withdrawals than deposits, what happened? You're gonna get in the red, right? <laughs> <laughs> so the purpose of this- Bouncing whole, checks. Is bouncing. Right, and so the purpose of this whole love bank concept is we want to get to the point where we learn what are positive interactions, what are some things that I can do to make sure your account is being deposited, and then mm. what am I doing to make withdrawals so I can make sure I make less withdrawals? Because at the end of the day, the more the bank account fills up, it's like an overflow, and that's the way you want your relationship to be. You want to be overflowing with positive, pleasurable interactions. Yeah. You want to actually be able to come home and like the person you're with each yeah. day. Yeah. And so when you get in the red, it just opens the door for so many things. And if you could avoid that's opening good. that door, then you don't allow the little foxes to spoil the vine. My God, yeah. that's, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> it's good, seven people clap. Come on, that's, that's good. No, that, 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 uh, that, that, that revelation really, I think, re really changed me. Because the idea yeah. was, and I think this is what really struck me, babe, is that Man, I never saw it like this. Every interaction, no such thing as a neutral interaction. No. Every interaction is making a deposit right. or making, making a withdrawal. withdrawal. Right. Positive interactions is making a deposit. Yeah. Negative interactions, making withdrawals. Right. And um, these actions, very often, it has little to do with intention. So. Right. There may be times where I'm making a withdrawal and I'm not trying to make a withdrawal. Right, it could be literally a habit, like an annoying habit, things that people do. And if you're not having conversations and communicating that, then you could be frustrated with some of those things. Yeah. So it can be something as simple as that, or it could be a large thing like, hey, I'm never receiving appreciation. Yeah. And so when you're not receiving appreciation and you're working hard, right guys, appreciation is important. You're working hard and no one's ever telling you, hey, I see you. Man, that's, the resentment starts to build. You're like, yeah. this is withdrawing. And then you walk in other places and people telling you how great you're doing. Yeah. Then it's like you're hearing other people make deposits in your bank and that's not supposed to happen. Yeah. And so, you know, it, it's Ooh, real. that's good. <laughs> that's good. Because what Harley says, you know that in love feeling that you have that people say that they lose? Yeah. All he says is that's the state of your bank account. That, that it's, not how, it's not how long we've been together. It was just when you first got together, you were intentional about making those deposits. Right. So the in love feeling is the consequence of a full bank account. Right. And the difference is, if you really look at when you first got together, you were listening, mm -hmm. you and, we were attentive, yeah. We were sensitive. We were caring so that we in love feelings. Like that new couple, they know all the answers. <laughs> they 
we been dating and getting the information. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but we yeah. lose that somewhere in the relationship. Yeah. We forget the importance. I think once we get married, then we're doing life and then children come along and so many things happen. We forget that we were husband and wife first. And that's one of the things you always tell me. I don't want to lose my girlfriend. Yes. Yeah. A hundred percent. Yeah, I say that. I say, I know you my wife, but I married my girlfriend. Yeah. That's right. I still want that girlfriend me. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Girl, so man, once, once we got that revelation, yeah. we started having this discussion, and then this is what we realized. We have been doing the five love languages stuff, and it's great, guys. We're not, we're just mm -mm. talking about what added value to us. Yeah. We were doing the five love languages stuff, and then we, we got into Harley, and we started reading about like relational needs, and it was like, it gave us language that we didn't have before, right. and it opened our eyes to see, I'm expecting stuff from you I hadn't communicated. Yeah. And I'm assuming that your love for me means you can read my mind. Right. Not realizing I'm constantly evolving. This woman met me. I wasn't even legal. I wasn't even 21. Right. Now I'm 43. So I've went through different iterations and versions of myself. Right. She can't read my mind to see that the 43-year-old Darius don't need what the 33-year-old right. Darius need. Yeah. But I have to be self-aware enough to investigate me. Right to see what I need in this season yeah. so I could communicate that. Yeah. I, well, I, I'm and not I think get the world's it. way has taught us so much. You know, they say, well, you should know how to love me. You should know what to do. I'm like, yeah, I don't know what to do. I need you to tell me how to love you. Teach me how to love you. Yes. I'm here. Let's do that. Because no matter how much you love each other, if you're in a long-term relationship, one day you're going to wake up and roll over to a stranger. Absolutely. Because life changes who you with yeah. in ways you can't predict. Yeah, absolutely. And I think when we first met, even if we go through our needs and we're, we're going to get into that, my needs two years ago are different than my top needs now. So it's not that I'm lesser in that area, but life happens, things happen, and in different seasons of my life, I may need something more. Yeah. And this is why it's so important to do check-ins and communication, and, and we'll talk about those type of things, but when you check in, then it just gives you an opportunity to make the adjustments. I call them marital adjustments. Just make your adjustments. Yeah. So here, right here in this session, here's something we want to kind of lay down as a foundation. We're gonna, yeah. um, and then we're, in this next one, we're going to get into what some of these needs are. Here was my struggle. So this is me. I always want to be authentic and mm -hmm. transparent with you. Because uh, what has helped me most with some of my mentors and coaches is them sharing with me their losses. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes I was intimidated by their wins. but some of the, So for me, I interpreted relational needs as needy. Yes. That was my, <laughs> that, that was my problem. Part of that was my upbringing. It was. Yeah, part of that was my upbringing. But I, I interpreted relational needs as needy. So here's a foundation right here that we, we want to lay. We think it's so important. Mm -hmm. You must give your partner permission to have needs that you don't understand and needs that you don't have. That's good. Right? That's she would talk good. to me about this affection thing, and I'm just like, I don't get it. Number one. This <laughs> is like, I don't, like, I don't. I need you it. Just want me to just, uh, you want me over you all day? When I walk in the door, hug me. Kiss no, he, me. yes. Wake like, up in the morning. Kiss me. Yes, it, it's all like, all of that. she in the morning, like, where my kiss? <laughs> like, we just kissed last night. What yeah. are we? Every time you see <laughs> we just, me. We just, we just kissed last night. <laughs> I just saw you. <laughs> I like you. I just need that from you. I did, but <laughs> but I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't need that. Yeah. And I didn't understand that, so I treated that. Yeah. As needy. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So you've got to give your partner. Babe, you agreed too fast when I said that. <laughs> Give your partner what you need. You're speaking some good stuff up here. Yeah. I'm like, come on. Yeah, That's so right. um, I, this is as before we get into these needs, yeah. you have to give your partner permission to have needs that you don't understand or that you may not have. 
Because in a kingdom relationship, in a kingdom marriage, you're not assuming a role. You're not saying yes to a role. You're saying yes to responsibility. Yeah. Literally, in your vows, you're saying, I'm going to take responsibility to give you what God say you can't get nowhere else. Right. Yes. Yeah. And if I don't want to say yes to that, then I really don't want to say yes to relationships God's way. Right. Because relationships God's way is I'm not just assuming a role, I'm accepting a responsibility yeah. to say, besides my relationship with God, Meeting your needs that you can only get from me becomes my highest priority. Right. And if we can take care of that, the, what we model for our children yeah. breaks generational patterns or what some people call curses. That's right. And it creates the kind of healthy, happy parents mm -hmm. that are able to parent from a place where they're not relationally frustrated. We got eight claps that time, baby. <laughs> so, babe, real quick, before we jump into these needs, you got some cars, and we're, we're going to walk you through an exercise in just a minute. These things are so important. There's some questions. <laughs> I took a picture of my car because I can't read that paper. I don't have my glasses. <laughs> so he's laughing at me about that, but I have my picture of my car yes. so I can blow it up. We was laying down last night. I was like, hey, baby, look at this. And she was like, I can't see it. I said, it's right here. I ordered me some readers. They're coming. It says, it's right, it's right here. <laughs> They're coming. I got some cute ones so I can look cute for you. <laughs> so we, we got some questions that have, uh, that have come in. Let's, let's take uh, one or two of them and then... Um... Okay. Oh, you want me to pick? Yes, absolutely. Okay, all right. Um, so I'll... Number two. I'll... That's all right. We can do another one. Come on. That might all take right. too long. So I'm just going to read one because this is, this is okay. a hefty one. And I want you to speak to it because I feel like this, okay. is, this, is, this, is, this is a real one. And if people haven't dealt with this, they're going to deal with it at some point. Okay. And it is, how do you navigate redefining your relationship when there's been a history of hurt between you both? No, that's really good. Um, one of the things I think we learn, it's been some years now, we learn the importance of our emotional health. And we learn the importance of being truthful and honest with each other about our feelings and our thoughts. And so um, as hurt, because hurt happens, hurt is going to happen throughout yes. relationships, but you have to be able to communicate when you're hurting. You have to be willing to work through forgiveness and then willing to move forward and make changes in there. And so we're not saying that it's easy. But I do know that it's possible to um, heal from hurt, to have a better marriage after that. But a lot of times the hurt comes from things that happen because you, maybe you weren't clear. Maybe you didn't know needs that needed to be met. Maybe there were some communication problems that weren't clear. And so um, we teach people that you have to work through the forgiveness part. And once you begin to work through the forgiveness part and the rebuild, then you have to move forward. You can't yes. move backwards. 100%. Yeah. Amazing. That's amazing. And one thing I want to say, too, I want to add to that. I think you answered it perfectly. And that is um, uh, there are different types of pain. Yeah. Right? Y'all reading what I'm writing? Mm -hmm. So there's different types of pain. And depending on the type of pain, that determines the kind of work that has to be done. Yeah. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So there's pain that just caused me pain. And there's pain that destroyed trust. And listen to me, trust is built in droplets. Yeah. It's lost in gallons. What? So it takes a long time to build it, but you can lose it all in a gallon. So when that happens, y'all reading between the lines here? When trust has been broken and that happens, one of the things that you have to assess is this. Uh, you got to deal with is not just the pain you're feeling, right? right? Yeah. But the steps that need to be taken for trust to be rebuilt. Yeah. And if the person is willing, the willingness. they're not responsible for your healing, right? but they can provide a context that makes healing easier. Yeah. Correct. If they're willing to take the steps that are necessary to restore trust. Mm -hmm. okay. And sometimes people want their cake and eat it too. They want to break trust and then maintain freedom. Mm -mm. No. 
No boundaries are required. Yeah, boundaries, Absolutely. boundaries, boundaries are required. So, uh, I think different kind of hurt requires different kind of work to recover from. And um, I, I'm going to go so far as to say this too. What we tell people is also you got to assess. You really have to assess. Um, is this a Peter, or is this a Judas? Does that make sense? Is this a, is this Peter, is this a out of character mistake? Or is this their character in this season? Yeah. And it doesn't mean that that's their character forever. Yeah. But if it is their character in this season, then what you need to prepare for is different than mm -hmm. what you need to prepare for long term if it's simply a, 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 a Peter. Peter had a had a bad day, bad season. Uh, Judas had some character issues that kind of needed, needed to be addressed. And I think that's why you keep talking about the personal work, the emotional health, Absolutely. et cetera. And I'm just telling you guys, we've been, we've been together 20 some years, we've been pastoring 17 years. All, everything we do is with people in one way or another. I'm not minimizing any pain, yeah. but I'm just saying, there's different types of pain in one way or another, everybody dealing with hurt. That's right. So I, I'm not excusing anything, right. but I'm normalizing mm -hmm. that there is no couple you see that ain't been through something. Right. Yeah. Did you hear what I just said? Right. I'm not excusing anything, and I'm not comparing apples to oranges. I'm just saying there is no couple you see that has not had to recover from one thing or another. Yeah. Make sense? Absolutely. Clap your hands if you're enjoying this so far. You getting some out of this? All right, right now my script is showing. We've got our hosts that are about to come back up, are they? And uh, we love giving stuff away, don't we? Woo! We're getting ready to give some other stuff away. Come on, clap your hands and welcome Isaac. Karee and D. Come on, give it up our pastors one more time. You enjoy yourself. Who is more likely to be late? Who's more likely to waste food on their outfit? <laughs> Who is more likely to forget your anniversary? <laughs> Who is more likely to order dessert? Who spends, <laughs> Who spends more time getting ready for the day? Who is more likely to fall asleep first? <laughs> Come on, make some noise, everybody. That's a little weak. Come on, let's make some noise. Y'all having a good time tonight? Somebody go crazy for Isaac Karee and pray for him. D, I didn't know how much I need to pray for you. We praying I am. for you. Praying, We're praying, for, praying you. for you. He's uh, it's just so incredibly talented yes. and, and uh, Man, listen, we love them. So listen, babe, this is, um, this is something. You actually put me on to, to this. Yeah. Uh, and so everybody should have a card that looks kind of like this. Should have had uh, that uh, on your seat. Got a lot of them. It says, Internally. I've yeah. got needs. There you go. Yep. So this is kind of an alternative to the love languages. If love languages are working for you, work what works for you. Right. Um, but if you want some additional support or if you're like us who needed something a little different, to give you language, because I knew I needed stuff, I just didn't have the language to articulate it. And um, especially if you've never had it, you don't yes. know. So, um, babe, let's real quick, let's kind of explain yes. some of these, and okay. then we're gonna give you instruction on what we want you to do with this really quick. All right, so the first one is affection. 
Now, one of the things that I learned is <laughs> affection. <laughs> Affection can be a learned behavior. This is something that you can learn to do. Because some people say, I'm not affectionate. I don't know how to be. This yeah. is something you can actually grow into. Now, affection is non-sexual. Non-sexual. Wait, 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 wait. Now, wait, wait. wait a minute. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. <laughs> See, here's the thing. And I just saw somebody. I, babe, I saw uh, Charity Rosier in the yeah. chat. And last time, I got real vulnerable. She was judging me. She judged you, Charity. I think some of y'all be judging me too. Don't judge But I'm gonna get us. vulnerable to help the people. Come on. So she was talking to me one time about affection and need for <laughs> affection. And I was like, babe, I grab your butt all the time. <laughs> that is not affection, sir. I said, I grab your butt all the, I grab your butt all the time. So this is why I teach you have to communicate what you need. So I clearly communicate. Affection for me is, and I go down the list. But one of the things that we do teach is affection can lead to something, right? Now, affection can lead to sex, but it is very non-sexual. Yes, right? I'm clear now. I'm clear Words, now. cards, Wait a minute, gifts, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Kisses, all of that Am I doing stuff. better now? Babe, you're doing real Thank good. you, okay. Clap your hands but for you me. But you still grab my butt. This side, not even clapping over here. Clap for your pastor, please. He's doing, doing better. good. Doing He's better. doing good. I grab yes. your butt all the time, baby. Yes. <laughs> so y'all get my drift on affection, and you say what <laughs> affection means to you. No one else can say what that means to you. You say yeah. what it means to you, OK? All right. You want to do the second yes. one? Yes. The second one, <laughs> sexual fulfillment. Come on, y'all. Sexual yeah. fulfillment. So I think th this gave me this gave me language. It <laughs> gave me language. language because I was trying to. Ex we were in a season. Are y'all y'all okay with this transparency? Yeah, we were in a season where um, there was Talk frequency, but there was still something missing. Yeah, yeah. And there were. I didn't particularly have the words. Mm -mm. I didn't know the words to describe it until yes. we actually came about this, came across this, and it's an experience that is predictably enjoyable and frequent enough for you. So how frequent should it be? Frequent yeah. enough for you. That is, that depends on the couple, it depends yeah. on the season of life, it depends, um, but for, for us, oh, we had to learn what makes this experience fulfilling? Yes. Not just physically, right. but emotionally. Yes. Now, I'm getting ready to go. Now, this is uncensored, so we just, that doesn't mean non tactful, but it means right. we deal with real issues here because right. we want to add real value. I, I had to, I didn't know this, but I had to learn this and communicate this as a man. I want to be wanted. Yes. Desire. That's I, right. want, I want you to lust. Yeah. See, Y'all scared. Y'all leaving me out here. <laughs> Lust after me. That's right. Come on. Come on. Yeah, I want you to lust after me. Yeah. I want to feel like you lusting after me before. Yeah. Text me. Yeah. See? Send me some. Send me some. <laughs> Te text me to let me know you thinking about me. Text me so I'm pressing the gas trying to get home. See y'all, see this, right? That's right. Cause use the vault, yeah, use the vault on your phone. It's me, use the it's me, <laughs> it's me, it's here. Yeah. Right, also yeah. I say, hey, I'm not saying everybody needs that, but I, I want to feel wanted. Yeah. Absolutely. In that way. Yeah. And we had to learn what affection is for you. Right. That is for me, because that helps me tap into the most affectionate side of me. Yeah. Now that shouldn't be the, y'all, are y'all, am I making sense? Yeah. Wait a minute, what you get ready to say? You gotta tell me. <laughs> I think you done said too much already, but. but yeah. Okay, that's good. That's good. Okay. That's good. That's good. <laughs> he has to filter have, me because I don't have me. Say yes, anything. I have to. She really got the message, Doc. When she got it, she got it. So I'm like, baby, uh uh, don't. 
No. <laughs> we we'll be in church. She rubbing my leg. No. <laughs> Stop. No, but seriously. So. <laughs> No, I'm serious. She'll be like, she will be a, she, she'll be like, you, you had a long day at the office. You sleepy? <laughs> yeah, I don't even, like, yeah, Tuesdays, she, I'm like, she, um, she'll be like, I ain't, ain't nothing happening on Tuesdays. I ain't getting none tonight. I ain't getting none tonight. <laughs> no, but seriously. And so I think even the way we talk about it now, <laughs> the way we talk about it now, I grew up, <laughs> I grew up in a church in a context where sex was basically for procreation. And what they taught is anything more like even enjoyment was almost wrong and so I had this mindset where it was a duty that I was supposed to do for my husband but I didn't understand the importance of the fulfillment piece I didn't understand that and we talked about it and it's like I felt like he was trying to explain things and I'm like yeah I don't get it and we realized that I needed to have somebody to help me understand it in a way mm. and so I actually found a really dope Christian sex therapist and she helped me um, learn things about me. She helped us learn just how to be almost um, not how to have intercourse, but how to have intimacy before the bedroom and in the bedroom. Um, she helped me with mindset. Mm -hmm. But then she told me one thing, and I don't know what happened that after that session. She was like, Shamika, you have needs that need to be filled too. She was like, you got to make sure your needs are being met. And I'm like, wow, okay. Because I only looked at it as something I was supposed to do, not something I was supposed to enjoy. And so, yes, it took time and it, it took, you know, many sessions for me to have that mindset broken because that was years of things that were implanted in me. But from there, we were able to start having honest conversations so I could understand what it really meant to fulfill his need in a way. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I had to, that's great, that's great. That was great. Because <laughs> I know what you was getting ready to say. <laughs> I can be filtered. <laughs> yes, sometimes, Lord. Sometimes, sometimes. <laughs> Pray for him, y'all. Pray for him. <laughs> you said over 40. Once you're over 40, then you can just pretty much My say what God. you want to say. That's what he told me. Praise him. <laughs> It was weird though because we had we were it was years in the relationships and I was making assumptions about why mm -hmm. I wasn't experiencing what I felt like I needed, and so I was personalizing it. Yeah. So in my head is is it me? You don't you don't want me like that? I don't I I, I don't get it and. I think that's important because sometimes we can be experiencing things in our relationship and we yeah. personalize it. And we feel like, oh, it's me. When that was something, I wasn't raised the way she was raised. I felt like I, my parents were not as, um, what's the word, strict? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I had a different religious experience yeah. than her. Um, I had a healthy view of it. I valued it. Um, so. I personalized something that shouldn't have been personalized. So anyway, we're never gonna get through these. Let's, yes, let's we're do this. Yes, we're gonna get through them. All right. We just spent 20 minutes on number two. But that was a good one. Thank you. Okay, You're welcome, so we fellas. Can get You're welcome. Other Praise God. You're welcome. God right. bless you. This, the third one is intimate conversation. So intimate conversation is when that person is getting into your world to talk about what you feel, what you like the things that you want to do. It's the intimate conversation because I know intimate conversation can lead to intimacy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and this is like really important to you because- It is. Y'all, don't judge me. But I was, uh, I, she would say, hey, you know, talking. Right. I'm not gonna say, cause I feel y'all judging me. Talk to me. She'd be like, like talk that. to me. And, I, and I'm like, yo, we, we was, you know, we on the couch together. You know what I'm saying? So anyway. <laughs> talk to me what well, I want to talk about in the same. We'll yes, talk to you about yeah. what you want to talk and about. And so I was yeah. like, hey, and she was like, okay, let me just keep it. Like, it'll be like, you know, greens was $12 and. Uh... <laughs> you know, we're laughing about yeah. this, but when you're dating, you talk to get to know the person because you want to know more about them and, and you're engaged and then it, you know, this is when you all know, the let, loving let me, let me, feelings let me, start happening. Let, let me let me let me finish, cause it would be like green, you know what I'm saying? Greens, and then I was at the store today, and this woman walked up to me, and since, 
And I didn't know that what she was wanting was interest in what mattered to her. Right. Even if I didn't share the interest. Does that make sense? So I'm thinking, you want me to care that greens is $12. I'm never going to care about that. We can fast and pray. I don't care that greens are $12. You can lay hands on me. I still will not care that greens are $12. But I realized that's, that's not what she wanted from me. She right. didn't want me to care that greens were $12. Yeah. She wanted me to care about that this mattered to her. Right and care enough to listen yeah. and engage in conversation. So now it's like $12, not $13. <laughs> you know. Well, how much are the green beans? <laughs> so now, wait a minute, right? I do not, but. No, I'm saying that's my attempt to show interest in what you're talking about. <laughs> So what I can say is, and this is one of the things, I don't know, somewhere in here we might say it, we also know the importance of having friends and, and relationships. So what I try to do is I try to call my girlfriends on the ride. So I get out all of that kind of stuff so that when I do talk to him, I'm actually talking to him about stuff he would want to hear. <laughs> so then, right, Britt D, we, we just talk about everything else. We talk about the mall and all that. So by the time I get to him, we actually talk about things that I feel like you would actually want to engage in. Yeah. Yeah. So Amen. I, I let you off the hook. Amen. But 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 I think I, I, I think I think it's important <laughs> because um, let me, hold on. Let, let me ask. Can I share this? Wait a minute. <laughs> okay. No, All okay, right. So uh, <laughs> she's like, you know, I don't care. Share it. Uh, yeah. But she even told me like even when we were talking about like um, it's like we go through these seasons where we relearn each other. Like a few years ago, like she bought these books and we just like yeah. Um, we we got to find them. Maybe we share it in a small group, like, because I don't remember what they were, but these books where we, like, there were questions. Yeah. And we had been together. 101 questions, couples. Um, 101, 101 questions for couples. Yeah. So it was, like, things we did on date night. We got them off of Amazon. You can download them. So I think it was, we were probably 15 years into the marriage where yeah. we were, like, relearning each other. And I was saying, hey, from a physical standpoint, what gets you there? You know, besides me walking in the room, what gets yes. you <laughs> What, what, huh, just besides the, besides the mention of my name, what, <laughs> what gets you there? And she was, she was very clear. She, she said conversation. Mm -hmm. I was like, so, you know, Talk would, I be me. Talk, would I be talking that? She said, no, 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 anything. She said, when you just be talking to me. It's foreplay for I me. I say, well, okay. Well, how much is milk? <laughs> <laughs> how much is orange juice? <laughs> <laughs> All right, come on, babe. We're going to run out of time. All right. Re this is a good one. This is such a good one. My yeah. pastor had to, had to help me with this one. Yes. Recreational um, companionship. Yeah. Yes. So this is doing leisure things together, having fun together, activities. And so you need to do things that both couples. So sometimes I may jump in and do things that he likes. I may not necessarily like it, but I'm going to do it because he likes to do it and then vice versa. So like basketball, now I do like basketball, but I go to the basketball games, especially the Hawks, because that hadn't always been a team of mine. I'm gonna go people watch. So I'm ready to go. I'm gonna get cute. I'm gonna go sit right there in the stands and while he hollering for the game, I'm trying to see who there tonight. I'm people watching. <laughs> I'm having a good time. Yeah, so yes. this, this is something my pastor really helped me with because she's a very recreational woman. Mm -hmm. So she's the one that's like, Bungee jumping, skiing, yes, uh, snow. Yeah. She was snowboard probably. It's like, babe, we yes. can't snowboard. Like, don't. Let's not. I don't want to bro. <laughs> but so you did I'm kind of. I'm like risk it. averse, right? Yeah. Like one 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 time we were in a country. She's like, I want to go ride horseback riding on the beach. He was like, Yeah, you can go. <laughs> yeah, he let me go. I he said, said That's no, how what Superman what I, got paralyzed. A I'm horse sorry. paralyzed Superman. I'm not getting on a horse. So I rode that horse by myself that day. So I was like <laughs> risk averse. And I was, I just feel like I'm looking really bad tonight. But anyway, I was, um, somebody say years ago, years, years ago. Years ago, years right. ago. So I was, we were talking to my pastor about this one time. And he was like, okay, Darius, these are things that she loves to do, memories that she wants to make. 
Yeah. Do you want her making these with somebody else besides you? Nope. I say, well, I ain't getting on a horse, but I've been skiing. Yes, you did. Snowboarding. Snowboarding. We had a parasailing. Yes, and we've had a blast doing Amen. all of them. Amen. Amen. Making memories. Yeah. yeah. So, recreational companionship. <laughs> Let's kind of right. run through the rest of these real quick because I want them to okay. do exercise. Yeah. Uh, honesty and openness, which is truthful and mm -hmm. frank expressions of positive and negative feelings. Yeah. Uh, events of the past, daily events and schedule, plans for the future, not Absolutely. leaving a false impression. Yeah. We're just going to be honest about this one. This one doesn't work unless you're working. You can't do this unless you're working hard on emotional intelligence. Right. Because you have to be willing to hear yeah. hard things. Right. And you got to be willing to say uncomfortable things. Yeah. You got to be willing to say, that turned me off. Yeah. That hurt my feelings. Right. I don't feel like we get enough time together. And you got to be emotionally intelligent enough to hear that. Right. and not be defensive and attack and judge why you so... Yeah, but it can be a way to say it. You speak the truth in love. Yeah. So it's a way to approach any situation. Yeah. Absolutely. And we used to do this like with our, like our weekly check-ins. We, it was so bad at this because at first our questions were, how am I doing at such and such? Like we're getting ready to ask you to do something yeah. mm -hmm. with this car and we would ask each other, hey, how am I doing at this? Yeah. And yeah. then that, that would just go bad because yeah, it's like, you know, how am I doing at this? Not good. Then I'm bad. <laughs> she bad. So we would no. say, we came up with these like cups analogies. Yeah. So like if your needs are the cups, let's yeah. say affection is a we'll cup. Say, how are your cups? We say, how's your cup this week? Yeah. And then say a little and low. And it's like, my cup's a little low. It's like, yeah. okay. That is different than, how am I doing with affection? Trash. <laughs> <laughs> and what we had to understand is sometimes the cups are based off of what's happening. You know, there's different things happening in the world. And some weeks you may need a little more affection or you need yeah. security. Whatever it is, your need is. And so you just communicate, hey, this is what I need right now. Can you feel that for me Good. in this way? Good. All right? Next one, babe. Physical attraction. You know, I love this one because I feel like growing up in church, we were taught it's almost carnal to like want what you want, mm. right? To be physically attracted, like, yeah, do they pray? Are they holy? Get together, let's go. And I'm like, no, you need to like what you want. So one of the things That's I love about partner. Harley is. <laughs> That's not a spouse. That's a prayer partner. <laughs> So Harley talks about these physical traits and um, you have to communicate what you want so that the person can meet that need if that is a need of yours. Yeah. Yeah. So this isn't about vanity. Uh, so that's different. Mm -mm. I know they're like, because we kind of reject some of the cultural pressure and social norms and culture defining what is beauty for you in your marriage. Yeah. You, you should have the right to define that. But um, we, we do think that's something that's, a, that's important. And so mm -hmm. I even had to learn, this is something, um, you're a little more f frank and straightforward. It's like, you getting skinny. Um, you can't tell a woman. You got, no, you that's what you would it. tell me. Right. Yes, that's what Men, you told me. Men, you can say that. Women, you got to come a little No, different. but I, would, I, would, oh, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> right. But what I'm saying is, <laughs> Baby, you need I, do, no. I do tell you what, like, so I'd be like, girl, I like, babe, I like when you wear jeans with. Yep heels or da, da, da. so just communicating that yeah all right let's kind of summarize these three because we're we're out of time the last four financial support and that's a, for, a form of, of security that is a need for some people and yeah. so if that is a need then you have to talk about what that looks like sure and then what does financial support look like in your home mm -hmm. um domestic yeah. support Domestic support, the same. If that is a need, you may say, I don't need you to do that for me. I, I yeah. can do, get somebody else to do that. But domestic support, if that's a need. Hey, babe, real, real quick. When, when, we, when we first got married, what did I say about cook? I know before we got married, we started dating. What yeah, I, I don't cook. Cooking? I can't do none of that. So I you say, got to be able to cook because we're going to be hungry. I said, if you can't cook, because when we first met, I'm broke and I can't cook. <laughs> so if you can't cook, we're going to be in trouble. He said, I can't boil water. I'm like, don't worry about it. I got you. I got you. <laughs> but that is important for some people. And then you need to clearly communicate your expectations for that so that the people can make sure that they're doing what they need to do. Because we don't want that little fox to be a frustration 100%. for you that causes withdrawals. Yeah. And I'm going to say this, too, for people who have, maybe you're in a season where you've got the financial means for this. 
Uh, one of the things that I'd say that I share with her is like, hey, and my pastor helped me with this too. He's like, yo, this is not grand. This is what you need. Yeah. If y'all not right, it affects a whole lot of other people than y'all. Yeah, that's right. It was like you got a whole kingdom enterprise built on the back of the integrity of your marriage. Mm -hmm. So you need to be willing to do whatever is necessary to protect that. Yeah. He really helped me shift my mindset there. And if some of you are in a season where yeah. you've got the margin financially to get assistance domestically, we really feel like an investment in that area is an investment in your marriage. Because yeah. it's like, I don't want you so tired from washing clothes and sweeping floors that you don't have the energy uh, to, to, to be... To light some candles upstairs yeah. and be ready <laughs> so, for you when you get home. So there were, right. things, there were things that we sacrificed early on in yeah. our marriage it's like yeah we're gonna get a house with less square footage because i want you to have some support with these kids yeah so right. the money we would be spending on a mortgage on a bigger home we're going to take that mm -hmm. and we're going to invest into somebody that can help yeah. you with these kids <laughs> that can help us yeah. with uh with things that are in our home yeah when, if you're not in that season you're not in that season but that is something that we feel like um I, I, nobody talked to me about until my pastor had that conversation with us, and uh, I think it really took things to, to another level. Yes. All right. Family commitment. That's the next one. So family commitment is provision. What is your expectation for the family unit? Do you want to have a tight-knit family? What do you want it to look like? What's important to you? Holidays, going to people's houses, all of those type of things. It's yeah. great to talk about that. And then if it's a need for you, I was talking to somebody today and she talked about it's such an important need for her, for both families to intertwine and be together. And so if that's important, then you make sure you need to address that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to go, I'm going to say something. This hasn't, uh, so when we talk, you're talking about the family commitment, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. One of the things that we did real, and this doesn't have to be for everybody. One of the things that like we were kind of like really clear on is the unique contributions we both made to our children. Yes. So there was not an expectation of her from me to be who she was to them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And she knew what she could not bring and she knew what to release to me. Yes. Absolutely. Birds and the bees conversations, she couldn't have them. Mm -mm. Those were conversations. Yes. That, that I had to have, right? right? I'm trash at math, so I can't help with the homework. So I'll do that. <laughs> right? And does that make sense? Yeah. She, she, she do that. She did some discipline, but I did a lot of the discipline. I didn't really I do did a lot job. of the, mm -mm. what's that? I didn't discipline. <laughs> <laughs> Gabe, I tried to discipline bit. him. He started laughing and making jokes. <laughs> I don't think I ever disciplined him. I can't. Yes. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, but he but would we start are clear. laughing when you were disciplining right. him. Yes. <laughs> yes. But uh, the discipline, the, mm -hmm. the coaching, the vision casting, yeah. the manly, the, like the affirmation of a father, the, the who is your identity, the, the family meetings, the traditions we established, um, those were kind of the, kind of the things. Does that make sense? Yeah. But um, there, there are other things that she was more equipped for. Mm -hmm. And so we knew what those things were. We don't feel like there's a, there's a blueprint or a rule on who has to do what. I just feel like it's a matter of your wiring and your strengths. Yeah. I do believe, like, so I'm a pastor, so I got a biblical worldview. I do believe that when it comes to stuff like vision, and things of that nature, the husband should be providing leadership there. Yes. Um, That's right. That it should be in collaboration, right, with the wife, but I don't want the pressure of her, pressure on her of leading and visioneering our family and our traditions and legacy and things of that particular nature. Yeah. When our, you know, children go through teenage things, I. I'm the one that has to lean in in a different kind of way. So we feel like family commitment, you got to define that for you because if not, it can be a tension point yes. because you can feel like you're not doing what I'm doing, so you're not doing your part. Right. Not realizing that people's parts can be different. Mm -hmm. right. Does 
Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's good. Admiration. Yes, admiration. What did I tell, tell them? Tell them. Go ahead. We out of time. That's just... the respect, the value, the appreciation. Um, just talking about how much you actually admire somebody and the words that you say. And if that is important, then you want to make sure that you're doing that on a regular basis. Again, so that they're hearing it from you and not hearing it from somebody else. Real quick. Uh, yeah. Years ago, I remember, I don't even think we had started the Orlando church at this point. I think we were probably just at the New Jersey church. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I came home one day and I, I asked that. her, I said, do you enjoy my preaching? <laughs> and, um, yeah, no, I did. I said, do you, do you enjoy my preaching? <laughs> and uh, she's like, of course. She's like, you know, I got a journal full of notes. What do you mean, do I enjoy your, your preaching? I was like, I never hear you say it. Yeah. And she said, at that point, I think we were in Jersey. We only had two services, so. Yeah. I would stay after each service and like greet people and all. She mm -hmm. said, you have a whole line of people every Sunday that are telling you they enjoyed your sermon. I say, but all of their compliments together don't weigh the same as yours. Yeah. And I was like, I, I'm asking you, do you enjoy it? Because I don't want you to tell me something that ain't true. Right. Yeah. But I'm telling you, I need, I want to know I'm admired by you. Yeah. That's right. And um, I wanted to talk about that because it's possible to feel admiration mm -hmm. that you don't articulate. Yeah. And, um, and that's something I had to work on. I'm not a person that, with a whole lot of words. So I've had to work on it through the years, and I'm growing for that, into that. But it's also important that he communicate that he needs that so yeah. that I can work on that yeah, even more. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Y'all got some out of this right here? Okay. This is what, you, what we want you to do. Five minutes here. This is what we want you to do. We want you to get this card. Were there pens on every table? Yeah, there I mean, pens, every... yes. Get this card. All right, this is what we want you to do, all right? Because if, if we tell you to do this at home, life's going to happen, and it's possible that you may not have an opportunity to do it. We want you to rank in this season of your life, what are your top three? No, I know it's a bunch of them on here, but I'm, you can't go home and do all of these tomorrow. Mm -hmm. But I want you to rank what your top three are. Yes. Um, for the people in Change Global, Deshaun, can we put these knees in the chat for them? I think they have them. So that uh, they, they have an example of this. I want you to put your top three. Well, if you enjoyed yourself tonight, clap your hands, everybody. Listen, man, we're, we're so thankful that we had the opportunity to connect with you. Uh, babe, what's those dates again? There are some dates we want you to put on your calendar. Yes, September 22nd and 23rd. We don't have the, 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 the deep, all of the deets yet, but we've got the date mapped out September 22nd and 23rd. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's going to be Atlanta. incredible here in Atlanta. It's yeah. going to be our, our couples conference. Yep. Yeah. And uh, we're doing not only a time of training, watch this, we're doing an adult prom. Because some of you went with the wrong one. <laughs> God's giving you another chance. Come on. <laughs> so keep, the, <laughs> keep those dates in mind. We're going to do it right here in Atlanta, uh, in yeah. Atlanta Georgia. And uh, for, the, for our online family, uh, keep those dates in mind. Yeah. Um, my wife and I want to share this uh, with you. Mm -hmm. Maybe you are, maybe your relationship is in a tough place. We want you to know we have been there. Yes. Uh, maybe you feel like you wondering, even if this is what God has for you. We have been there. Yeah. Maybe, you, maybe you're at a place where you hanging on right now just for the kids we've been there too um, but we know what it is to be there and not stay there that's right we know what it is yeah. to watch God work miracles in your marriage and uh, we know what it is to really to really look back um, at some challenging times and seasons.
and say, I wouldn't want to relive it again. But if that is yeah. the only way to get to this, That's right. I would. And so for those of you who, some of you came just because you want an enrichment tonight. Mm -hmm. Others of you may have came or you may be watching because you're in a hard place. I want you to know that God still works miracles in marriages. That's right. And he resurrects relationships. Yeah. And you can be fruitful. You can be flourishing. Yes. And you can be fulfilled. Our relationship is not perfect, but it's so solid. It is. And it is so real. Yeah. And I admire this woman. I love this woman when I'm away I actually and I'm an ambivert so I need a long time but when I'm yes. away I miss this woman and um, we don't have anything you don't right. we just had belief That's right. yeah. and we were willing to put in the work yeah. so we want to pray uh, we want to pray over you as we prepare to go we I think we need an anointing to serve our spouse. That's right. Oh, yeah. To serve your partner. Yeah. We need God's grace. That's right. Lord, help me to meet those needs. Yeah. Because when she asked me for affection, I had to give her what I never had. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's right. I had amazing parents. Yeah. The most amazing parents in the world. But I don't remember my mama hugging me. I'm sure she did we hug now but I don't even remember it yeah and she would literally die for me she loved me so I literally had to ask God teach me how to do something yeah I don't know how to do it. and just like God helps you bear burdens just like God helps you get through hard times just like God helps anoint you to do a job God will help you make the most important contribution you can ever make and that's to the person you said I do to and so we want to pray that over you is that okay so father we pray right now for an anointing uh, to meet the needs of the person you've connected us to I pray for those that are dating I pray for those that are engaged I pray for those that are newly married I pray for those who are on the second time around. I pray that you give them the grace, the wisdom, the sensitivity, the insight to meet the needs of the person you've called them to. Give them a revelation. You've been anointed to meet this person's needs. May they fill each other's cups until the cups run over. May their relationships be blessed and blissful and joyful and a powerful picture of your relationship with the church. God, we thank you for this. We pray blessings over these couples. I pray for safe travel uh, back to their destinations. We pray for the safety and protection of their children. And we pray in Jesus' name that your kingdom would come and your will would be done in our homes as it is in heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. Clap your hands, everybody. Thank y'all for coming. Give it up for our DJ tonight. We out of here. We'll see you next time. Love your change global.